We'd like to give you a quick tour of the Vivado Interactive Design Environment, or IDE. When you open a Vivado project, there is a project summary that gives you a nice overview of project settings, warning and error messages, and the general state of your project. There is a sources view that shows you what type of files are in your project, such as hardware description language, constraint and simulation files, as well as IP. You can add source files or create them on the fly with the source code editor. Along the left side is an area called the Flow Navigator, which controls compilation flows and analysis views of the tool. It's organized like a natural development process. Clicking on buttons in the navigator will either execute a flow or load the design at a particular state for viewing and analysis. The Xilinx IP repository is available for selection and configuration of IP. Clicking on the IP catalog brings up the IP view for browsing and searching. If I expand all, I see the complete list of IP, and double-clicking on an IP brings up a configuration wizard which will walk me through the parameterization of that IP core, such as this AXI-based DMA controller. Once I make my selections in the configuration wizard and click Finish, the IP core is now added as a source to my project. The Flow Navigator is organized by the most common tasks to be performed, from simulation and behavioral verification to synthesis and implementation. You may click on the Run Implementation button, and we will launch a one-click synthesis and implementation run which will compile your design, running it in the background. This leaves the GUI available to perform analysis tasks. Vivado makes heavy use of multi-core processors for maximum productivity. Vivado's simulation, synthesis, and implementation is up to four times faster than competitive tools. Clicking on the Simulation button loads the simulation view of the design. The most important aspect of simulation is functional verification of your design at the behavioral RTL level. From here you can run your simulation test benches, select signals to probe, and view in the waveform view. The waveform view is just like all the other views in that you can use keystrokes to zoom in and zoom out to debug the design. Objects of interest in the simulation view can be easily found in your RTL source. Select a signal, click on the right mouse button, and you get a pop-up menu allowing you to go directly to the relevant line in your source code file. You'll notice throughout the tool, our shared object model allows design objects to be cross-probed from one area to another. This is a huge benefit for debug and analysis. If you click on the RTL Analysis button, you can open the elaborated view of your RTL to view a schematic representation of the design before running Synthesis. This gives you quick access to your design without waiting for an entire compilation to complete. You will also notice throughout the tool that we are enabling early access to the design for analysis purposes so you can develop your RTL and constraints more effectively. If you select an instance in the schematic, once again the right mouse button brings up a pop-up menu which allows you to go to the source code where that object was instantiated or defined. Clicking on the Synthesis button allows you to run Synthesis or open the post-Synthesis netlist if it is already completed. This will read in the gate-level netlist produced from Synthesis as well as read in the constraints and apply them to the netlist in memory making the design available to you for reporting and analysis. At this point, we are using the Synthesis Netlist results, but the design is not yet placed and routed, so the tool will use estimation algorithms as appropriate, and many reports are available at this stage. The first thing you might be interested in post-synthesis is resource utilization. Once the design is open, I can click on the Report Utilization button to get a graphical report that explains device resources being used, both globally by type as well as organized by logical hierarchy in the design. The next thing a designer will be interested in is timing analysis. If the design has timing problems at this stage, it might be a waste of time to launch an entire compilation, so we encourage users to iterate with constraints and clean them up before launching implementation. If I click on the Report Timing button, I get a dialog for the timing report options. I'll click OK to choose the defaults, which will give me an overview of each clock domain and the worst path on it. This will generate a graphical report sorted by clock group and the worst path in each is at the top. I can expand the results view to see them all and I can double click on the one path to get a more detailed view of the path and how the setup or hold analysis slack is calculated. I can also select a path, right mouse click and choose to generate a schematic view of the timing path as well as be able to cross probe instances back to my RTL source. Clicking on the implementation view loads the design at the post-implementation stage. This reads in the final netlist, the place and routing database, as well as the final constraints that match the results of implementation. This is the final state of the design, where you get the most accurate analysis picture. Note the detailed device view now shows a lot of green, visually indicating the routing resources are now used in the device.
Just as we did at the post-synthesis stage, we can run a utilization report to give a graphical view of the implementation state by resource type and by logical hierarchy. Now we will run timing reports, just like we did at the post-synthesis stage, but instead of estimation for net delays, we are using the actual routing delays from the placed and routed design. We are running the static timing analysis live, in memory, as opposed to just reading a report file from disk. This allows us to do very powerful interactive queries, and incrementally add in constraints if we need to for what-if analysis. I'll expand the timing results report. Note that we have violations. We need to investigate these. Double-clicking on a path will bring up a detailed path trace. I can then go to the device view, zoom into the device to see the selected cell placement and routing, and visualize which area the device is affected. If I go back to the path trace, I notice that the starting clock and ending clock are different, indicating to me that I've got a cross-clock timing path. I happen to know that these two clock domains are exclusive to each other, meaning they cannot both be active at the same time, and I forgot to add a constraint to the tool to properly configure that. The constraint language is based on industry standard SDC, Synopsis Design Constraints. I will bring up the constraint editor and add in a set clock group command to specify these two clocks are logically exclusive. Then I will rerun the timing report and instantly see the timing picture got a lot better. Note that I didn't have to rerun implementation to see the results of the changed constraint. Next time through the implementation, we'll run with the constraint I just added to my constraint file. And now I would like to get a picture of the power consumption in my design. I will click on the report power icon, which will bring up a dialog for running power analysis. If I choose all the defaults and click on run, I will get a graphical report of both static and dynamic power usage in my design. I can expand the report and see a histogram of I.O. and core dynamic power, as well as device static power. I can also expand into the utilization details and see by hierarchy which portion of my design is consuming the most dynamic power. And of course, you can generate a bitstream from the implemented results to download and program into your device. We've now given you a quick tour of the Vivado Interactive Design Environment, which is Xilinx's next generation tool suite for 7 Series devices. Vivado delivers revolutionary improvements in compile times, design productivity, and ease of use. Thanks for your time.